Hi, I'm Amity. Thank you for coming to our Design 101 from Home. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a subject that is near and dear to my heart, the tyranny of the open plan. We've been getting a lot of calls from clients recently who are home with their families and they're really feeling the impact of the noise level and the frustration with keeping a space tidy in a space that has very few walls. So uh, we always start our design 101s with this quote from Elsie DeWolf, widely considered the world's or America's first interior designer. I am going to make everything around me beautiful. That will be my life. We love Elsie. Extreme open plan living. Let's is where we're going to start. Um, beautiful. Yes. Let's light in. Yes. Feels open and connected. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of positives about this type of space. This is a very grand, open um, look. The negatives of an open plan space are many. Um, you can imagine a space like this where there's no division between kitchen, uh, dining room, living room. The demand to keep that space clean and tidy and ready for the neighbors to drop by at any time is high. Uh, very few places to escape for Zoom calls or uh, to read a book quietly with a child. And we're getting a lot of calls about that right now. People are adding walls back into their, into their homes and soft flooring um, and trying to create spaces that uh, allow them to have different various activities without, within their home. To me, this is a dream kitchen. Uh, closed off, separate from the rest of the house, an absolute mess of beautiful things open to the outside, lots of light, but a creative space that you can go into and work uh, and leave a mess and have no shame about it. Enjoy yourself. So how did we get here? How did we get to a place where open plan living was the desire uh, and the possibility? Um, really started with the rise of the middle class after World War II and uh, the development of construction uh, science that enabled us to have big open plan living. And with the rise of the middle class, uh, there were fewer servants in homes doing the cooking and cleaning. And uh, all of that work became the uh, work of the housewife. I think we can all remember Samantha in her lovely little kitchen, many of us uh, from Bewitched in the, I guess that would be the 60s. Um, with what I think is kind of an ideal situation, a closed off kitchen that is partially open to the rest of the house. She had a laundry room in there and a breakfast table and a view through to the dining room and the living room. But at Samantha's house, you didn't have to smell the onions all day. You could shut the doors and have some privacy, some ventilation and some sanity in your home. So really kind of an ideal in between of the two. These, this is three kitchens uh, that are examples of also very, very closed off private separate kitchens. People are horrified by galley kitchens in the old days. It used to be the thing people wanted to tear out. Now it's kind of a dream of a room to go into, be by yourself, um, do your work, and still maybe large enough to have a few guests in. The other kitchen you see here is another closed off kitchen but plenty of space for someone to come in and, and hang out and obviously very beautiful and rustic. So as an interior designer, when we do get called into a house that has an open plan, there are some tricks of the trade that we know um, that we use to try to make an open plan actually work. Um, part of it is the challenge of adding separate dividing walls, something that um, creates the semblance of a room without a room. Pony walls are good for that. This is an open plan house where you can see they've used a pony wall, a low half wall, to actually have a place to put furniture. That's the other thing good walls are good for is providing us opportunities to place furnishings so we can have comfort. Um, what you don't get when you have an open plan is rooms like this, a paneled private pan paneled library um, or, or study uh, space with soft flooring materials or a beautiful library 
um, or a, a separate entrance hall that uh, you know feels like its own separate room. So that's really the trade-off. When you have an open plan, you don't really get these decorative moments um, that create so much privacy in a home. So here's an example um, of a project we worked on a few years ago where we decided that we convinced the client to leave the kitchen closed off from the rest of the house. Um, it's partially open, again, the uh, Samantha ideal, and uh, gave her a Zen living room that always looks tidy and a kitchen that's separate. In this home is a project we did uh, where the client wanted a library space that also acted as a sitting room and a guest room. Um, so that's a pull-out sofa, a really easy way to be with family and comfortable but have separate spaces. And finally, a lovely little project in uh, North Hyde Park that we did, a client that wanted a creative space closed off from the rest of the house because she liked to sew and do projects. So these are the, these are the lovely little attributes of um, closed plan living, let's call it, um, that I think are coming back in this time of all of us gathered home together. So I hope that that was educational and interesting for you. I appreciate you being here and we'll see you again soon at our next Design 101. Thank you.